Repair video will cover the GTX 335 transponder. Some of the information presented may also pertain to other similar transponders. Here you see the self-test for my transponder coming up as it would normally, and here is the label information that typically appears on the unit. These are some of the error messages coming out of the master nav radio, the Garmin 430W, and the transponder as well. As far as the transponder is concerned, it is throwing a ubiquitous service soon error message, which is disappointing to be sure, but it is listed in the service manual available from Garmin. Unfortunately, the resolution path seems only to be that of calling a technician, and that's the whole of it. However, jumping the gun to send in the unit is not a good idea without checking everything first. You can also get other serious looking messages like pressure altitude failed along with the service soon error message. I believe it's possible to get up to three messages at the same time, and here's an example. I got these while en route to the required 24 month altimeter check, but the test confirmed that the ID was squawked correctly along with the altitude to within 10 feet of accuracy. The check was done by a Garmin certified technician who at the time could not reproduce the messages I had seen previously. He theorized there was a loose coax connection to an antenna but offered no other advice. He issued the logbook sticker and he said he even included a free software upgrade to be sure and that was the end of the discussion. The problems came back almost immediately. I realized at least I'd have to remove the transponder just to reseat it, and I hoped that would be the fix. I like this particular style of the 332nd inch T-handled Allen key because it's got a long reach and goes over the knobs easily, so I didn't have to struggle with this one like I might have with the standard Allen key. When you're tightening or loosening the hold down screw, use only very gentle force because it's possible to break the screw and end up with another repair. They are replaceable, but don't let it come to that. Ordinary tightening should be good enough. Just snug. Here it's possible to see the transponder in the tray from way back under the panel, and you can see part of the transponder sticking out beyond the back of that tray. That's the cooling fan manifold on the left. After the hold down screw is loose, just push the scutcheon towards the front of the tray and the transponder should slide right out. Here's a shot of what the back end of my transponder looks like. It's pretty simple. Mine is slaved to the navigation radio via the 62 pin P3301 connector, so it does not need a GPS antenna input. The RF output connector is on the right. This is a view of the inside of the tray. You can see the P3301 connector that is held in place by two small countersinking screws that go into very thin metal. Though it's hard to see, the one on the left came loose, and fortunately, it was still hanging around. You also see four black hold down screws that are not completely tightened down to the harness bracket. These act as alignment guides. The bracket is removed by grasping it gently from behind the tray and moving it from the left to the right, so that the larger hole openings will allow the screw heads to pass through them to the rear. The bracket must simply drop down enough to be worked on, that's all. Don't lose those small screws because they could be very difficult to find and are not usually found in hardware stores. This is a close-up of the small countersinking screw I'm talking about. This shot is of another bracket though for the 330 transponder, but the same P3301 62 pin connector is used. Both of the small countersinking screws need to be tightened carefully, but without over-tightening them. Over-tightening these may cause them to strip, so be careful. After I got everything back together again, I realized using thread sealant was probably a good idea, but I would have used the less permanent type, had I any. Reassembly of the bracket onto the tray is the reverse of the removal. For a moment, I thought I might want to tighten down those four floating screws with that support bracket, but I didn't have a long extension. It's probably a good idea to leave some free play anyway, since there could be a bit of an alignment issue for the pins. The key thing is not to have the main connector able to back away from the bracket holding it, occasioned by loose screws. Now tighten down the transponder, being careful not to over tighten it. If all the pins have gone home, the messages should all disappear. I spent a total of 30 minutes doing this repair. 
I don't know about you, but I don't have a thousand dollars to throw at this problem. Nobody seemed eager to work with me on the resolution of this issue either. It's really infuriating, but I do think it's important to be knowledgeable in every aspect of the owned aircraft. As always, it's important to keep checking for the effects of vibration. Looking for loose screws is something that's routine, and more importantly, looking where they are not usually visible for routine inspection.